thank you for being here at another one of our Real Estate Agents Edge 60 Minute Money Makers. The 60 Minute Money Maker series is a short series to do over like a lunchtime like we're doing today, where we can cover a few things that are gonna make us money in a short period of time without tying up a lot of your time so you can come in, get some good information, and go right back out again and use it. So everything we talk about here is ways to make money. Today we're gonna to focus on something called the how to hold the perfect open house. Now, who here has done open houses? Okay. Who here has done open houses where almost nobody shows up? Is that fun? No. <laughs> no. You sit there and, and you're wondering what the heck, where is everybody? Well, we're going to address that and we're going to take a look at how to build traffic to your open houses so that you can get a lot more people through the open house. We're going to take a look at what the purpose of an open house is in today's real estate market. We're going to take a look at how to sell more open houses, but we're also going to take a look at how to build your inventory of buyers and sellers, in other words, building your lead inventory. Everything we're going to talk about is easy to do, it's low impact, nothing costs you any money, so everything we're going to talk about today is free to do, and if you do what we say today with your future open houses, you will have more business. So I always start out with a joke, for those of you who have been with me before, and I say, well, what's a joke about an open house? And I've told this joke before, and half the audience gets it right away, and the other half has a delayed reaction. So let's see how sharp everybody here is. Uh, there's this realtor that goes to do this open house, and nobody's coming, and nobody's coming. He's sitting there all by himself. Finally, after about an hour and a half, he hears the doorbell ring, ding dong, and he goes to open up the door, and he looks down, and, and a voice says, hello, and he didn't see anybody. He looks down, there's a snail there. And a the snail says, hello. And he's so angry, he goes down and picks up the snail and throws it as far as he can. He closes the door and goes back to his open house and nobody comes. The open house is over, he leaves. Two weeks later, he's back doing the same open house again because the seller wants him to do a couple of open houses a month. And again, an hour into the open house, here's the doorbell ring. Ding dong. He opens up the door again, doesn't see anybody, looks down, here's that same snail. The snail looks up and says, what the hell did you do that for? <laughs> okay, a little bit of a delay, you get it? Yeah. yeah. All right. So, with that, let's get into how to hold the perfect open house. Open houses then and now. Who's been in real estate for more than 10 years? Who's been in real estate for more than 15 years? Anybody been in real estate since it was invented? Yeah. <laughs> you. I am probably that guy. All right. Because I'm going to open out, I, I, my anniversary, is, I'm, I have a very important anniversary coming up in September of this year, it's 2018. In September of 2018, it will mark 30 years in the business for me, which is amazing. So, yeah, I was 12 when I got my license. <laughs> <laughs> but open houses are different back then, and I found this cute little short video that kind of is a nice segue into where we're going to go between where open houses were and where they are today. So see if this looks like where we are today. How are you? Hi, Hi how I'm are Chuck. you? Hi, nice to meet you. How are you? And you are? I'm Farrell. Nice to meet you. Oh, nice to meet you. Come on in. Get yourself signed in. There's a sign-in registry right there. Oh, how are you? I didn't mean to slam the door in your face. Hi, okay, I'm Chuck. What's your name? Carrie. Carrie? Hey, how are you? Come on in. Let's get you signed in. Nice What's your name? Janine Sullivan. Janine Sullivan? Mike Sullivan. Mike Sullivan? Come on in. Let's get you signed in. Thank sure. You. I'm Chuck Edershot. How are you? Hi. I'm actually the neighbor across the street, and I just wanted to see what the uh, kitchen looked like. I heard they did some renovations to it. Oh, great. Fantastic. Come on in. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
And that is probably the type of open houses that you're having, that you're mm -hmm. running into. Mm -hmm. So if I could teach you how to have open houses like the one shown in 2003 at the beginning of the video, would that be valuable to you today? Absolutely. All right, fantastic. Well, let's not waste any more time then. Why hold an open house when less than 5% of home sales come from open houses? Maybe I should start with, did you know that only 5% of sales come from open houses? A lot of people don't even know that statistic. The funny part is, NAR teaches doing open houses. They say that's one of the things every realtor to do should do. But look, only 5% of open houses sell the house. That means 95% of the time you're going to have a wasted open house if you go there to sell the house. So I want you to get out of some psyche. I want you to take your mind somewhere else. And we're not going to be talking about trying to sell the house. We're going to take a real look at what the open house is really there to do is to build your business. Okay? So I want you to stop thinking that you're there to sell the house because this statistic says you're not there to sell the house. Can we agree with that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So it, my question, very simple. Are you there to sell the house? A, answer A, or are you there to get leads? Answer B. A. B. B, you're exactly right. So I want you to start thinking that you are not there to sell the house you are there to get leads. What kind of leads can you get in an open house? People looking for house for houses. You can get buyers. 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 Okay, what other kind of leads can you get in an open house? Rentals. You can get rentals, that's true. And what else? Second home investment properties. You can actually well, that's, get sellers. That, that, that's a buyer too, but sellers, that's what I'm looking sellers. for. Sellers. So you get buyers, sellers, or renters. Those are the three basic kinds of people you're gonna get in an open house. So we're not there to sell the house, we are there to get leads. So if you're taking notes at all, your notes are, I am not there to sell the house, I am there to get leads. I want to burn it in your brain. Because once you say, okay, I'm there to get leads, I'm there to get leads, your whole outlook on open houses and how you run them is going to change so that you can become more profitable. Now there is another reason that people do open houses. And anyone want to take a stab at what it is? Well, let me put it this way. Uh, you have a listing, it's been on the market for seven months, hasn't sold, it's only had two showings, and uh, you call, this, a seller calls you up and says, I want you to do an open house. My house isn't selling, I want you to do an open house. The house is usually overpriced, so why would, what's, what's another reason you would do the open house is to appease the seller. You're doing it to appease, a lot of agents do it just to appease the seller. You know, they get a call, they're afraid to call the seller because they took the listing and it's overpriced in the first place because the only reason something doesn't sell is if it's overpriced, right? Okay, so all of a sudden you're into the listing, it's not selling, the seller calls you up kind of angry and says, hey, my house isn't selling, what are you doing to sell my house? And the agent invariably reaches for anything he can and since he's burned into his brain that open houses are something he should do to sell it, he'll go, hey, you know what, I was just going to call you. Let's do an open house. How about this weekend? I'll, I, and I'll do it Saturday and Sunday from 10 in the morning until 5 o'clock in the afternoon. I'll be there all day. Um, and what did that agent just do? He promised two days of his life away to completely waste it to appease a seller. Okay? So that is the third reason that we do it. I don't want you to do it to appease the seller. Uh, and also, when talking to a seller about doing open houses, how many open houses should you do? Let's pretend that there's a six month listing period. Okay, standard listing. How many open houses should you do in a six month listing period? How many do you think? Four or five. Four or five, okay. How many do you think? Three. Three? What do you think, Norma? Two. Two, what do you think? I would say a couple a month. Okay, and what do you think? A couple of months. Okay, Norma is the most right. Two in the six month listing period. I tell a self, listen, I know that I don't want to sit in an open house for hours doing nothing unless I set it up right the way I'm going to talk about. And I'm doing it to appease the seller. If I price the property right, I will probably never have to hold an open house. Correct? Yeah. Okay. So if I'm going to do an open house, I'm going to do, open, do an open house so I can come back to the seller after the open house for what's called a price reduction because I want to have some tools to take with me and I want to use the open house in order to get a price reduction. Say, Mr. Mrs. Sell, your house didn't sell, it's time to lower the price. 
I rarely will do more than two open houses in a six month period of time. And I tell the seller, it's one of the things I don't do and I show them that statistic that 5% of houses sell from doing open houses. And once I get them to understand that, they don't ask me to do lots of them. But I've seen agents take listings with seller instructions saying I want an open house every single weekend. And I want you here both days, Friday and Saturday all day. And the, and the, and the realtor wants that listing so bad that they will take listings like that and just completely paint themselves in the corner. So what I'm saying is don't do that, okay? Because you're gonna waste a lot of time. So if you do do a couple of open houses, do them right. And if you did, and what I tell sellers, listen, when I do a rare open house, I'm gonna do it right and here's what I'm gonna do. And I basically give them the same presentation we're gonna look at today so they understand why I only do one or two. Because my time is better off spent out there prospecting for buyers I tell them, rather than sitting in your house hoping buyers show up, because I'm proactive. Other agents that just sit open houses are called reactive. There's two types of prospecting, proactive and reactive. But you can use an open house to be proactive. So that's what we're going to look, one of the things we're going to look at. So what's the best way to get leads? What's it, across the board, now keep in mind, those of you that have been with me before, I teach at a first grade level. So I want you to think like a first grader. What's the best way to get leads in three words? Talk to people. Oh, I heard right. Talk to people. <laughs> exactly right. Talk to people. You know, funny thing, we got a real estate license, and nobody it requires us. Nobody, no, exactly, nobody knows. We're, we're all secret agents. <laughs> <laughs> you don't make money being a secret agent, and you're not James Bond. Okay? So you have to talk to people, and this job requires us to talk to people. And if you're afraid to talk to people, then you probably got in the wrong job. Just to tell you that right now. Now, if you love talking to people, fantastic. But I, the funny part is, I, I always ask when I'm teaching a new group, and, and a lot of times I'll say, why did you get into real estate? And that's a common question. Hey, you got your license, why'd you get into real estate? And I, I would go around the room like this, say, uh, Norma, why'd you get into real estate? Give me a real reason. Why, why did you get into real estate? Oh. To make money and to help people. And to help people. And to help okay, people. Okay, make money and help people. Why'd you get into real estate? I was learn more about this area for investing in real estate. Okay. And to make money. All right, why'd you get into real estate? Make money and you make me. Okay, why'd you, why, <laughs> why'd you get into real estate, Ray? I've been involved in home construction basically my whole life, and it was a, the next step to make money. Okay, yeah. all right. I'm getting too old to construct homes. Okay. Well, you guys all got good answers. If, if I'm in a normal group, you guys are above normal, okay? <laughs> if I'm in a normal group, the number one answer I hear is, I like people. <laughs> I say, well, I got a real estate because I like people. Good for you. <laughs> and I remember what my broker told me 30 years ago when I got, he said, why'd you get your license, Dave? I said, I like people. He leaned over to me and said words I'll never forget. He said, you'll get over that. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah. But you have to talk to people, people, all right? You have to talk to people in order, in order to go out there and find leads. So ways to talk to people. There are different ways to talk to people, if you're taking notes. But I'm going to add to this. Ways to talk to people that actually work, okay? Ways to talk to people that work. You can call them oh. up, right? Does your phone, everybody here have a phone? Yeah. Okay. Does your phone make outgoing calls? Yes. Fantastic. <laughs> all right. When's the last time you used to make an outgoing call to call a prospect? <laughs> See, that's the problem we have, okay? Well, hopefully we can fix that a little bit today. So we can call them. By the way, it's free to call them, right? Yep. I don't know about you, when I got my first cell phone, I, w I was with a company called US Cellular, and it was this big bag that I strung over over my, my shoulder. It was the first portable phone. It looked like I was going into war. <laughs> the battery bigger than my laptop computer. And I, and I was dating Wendy at the time, and I remember showing up at her restaurant she worked at and sat up at the bar, and I said, they gotta show you this. I just got my first cell phone. Boom! <laughs> and she's like, holy cow. And I pulled it out, a big long cord. I said, isn't this great? And you know what? It only cost me 30 cents a minute to make a call. 30 cents a minute. That means a three minute conversation is a dollar. Yeah. Oh, for crying out loud, back then a beer didn't even cost a dollar. 
So I remember cell phone bills of $200, $250 a month, easily. Yeah. You know, it didn't take anything to ring up a cell phone bill like that. Now today, we really advanced. So it doesn't cost anything to call them, does it? No. What's another way? Well, you can door knock. knock on doors. Knock on doors. Now there's other things that you can do too. But we have found that prospecting, whether it's an open house or whatever it is, we're focused on open houses today, these two methods give you the most number of leads. I'm going to give you some other methods in a second, but out of everything, these two give you the number one and number two leads. If I knock on doors before an open house, I have never gone out knocking on doors and not picked up a lead from somebody who's thinking about buying or selling. It's never happened. I've had people invite me into their house and say, hey, we're thinking about selling this house in a couple of months. Would you mind coming in and taking a look and tell us what it's worth? I've had that happen dozens of times. Nobody would have got that lead if they, would, if, you know, if they weren't door knocking. I wouldn't have got that lead otherwise. And I picked up a lot of listings by doing that. I've called around neighborhoods before an open house. And I've found amazing types of leads calling around neighborhoods telling them about an open house that's coming up. And there's different methods you can use to get the phone numbers for neighbors. So these are the number one and number two best way to get leads. Other things that you can do. Other methods is direct mail. You can use direct mail. Now, does anybody know what the response to direct mail is? 1%. Yeah, it's, it, it's actually, yeah, I think, less than 1%. So you got to send out a thousand pieces to get like seven or eight replies. Okay. I, I haven't read one and come to my house yet. Yeah. yeah. I, I think your direct mail piece is, the, the life of the direct mail piece is directly proportional to the distance from the mailbox to the trash can. Yeah. So the further your trash can away is, the better chance they have of reading it. I watched a special years ago, it was like in 60 minutes, about this person who heated their home with junk mail. <laughs> they actually subscribed to as many things as they could so people would keep sending them junk mail and they actually did a piece on them that they heated their home with the junk mail that showed up every day. So, uh, so direct mail is a method, not what I recommend, but it does work very, very little. Email is another method that you can do. And you can email out stuff about the open house to neighbors and get their email addresses. I don't know about you, but I have a spam folder. I have a promotions folder. Um, I have another folder for sales. Uh, and I've got another folder for social. And then I've got the folder for just the important stuff. Where do you think that email is going to end up? Is it going to end up in the important stuff folder if I'm sending that out to people? No, no. Um, and I'm sure everybody goes delete, 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 delete when they're doing their emails because it get, it's getting crazy. I count, I get over 120 emails a day. That's a lot. Yeah. Okay. And so I want to delete as fast as I can. So it is a method. Doesn't have a good response. How about the ad in the paper? You can do an ad in the paper, and we still use this method, don't we? We still run ads in newspapers. Here's a question for you guys. When's the last time you actually bought a newspaper? Years. Every day. You do buy one every day? Yeah, yeah. but yeah, but you're ancient. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. Not that you're it's ancient, true, but that's <laughs> I'm just kidding. It, no, I mean, it's yeah. true. I I I I may be less than ten percent of the neighbors probably get a newspaper delivered. Okay. Yeah, I bet you're right. Less than ten percent of your neighbors mm -hmm. still get a paper delivered. I get I get news alerts on my phone. Yeah. If there's something going on, um, I get a news alert that tells me what's going on. Uh, I, I just check the phone every morning. I read the news for about three minutes. I know exactly what's going on. Is the world going to hell? Yes. Okay, good. Everything's normal. <laughs> That's what the news is like. So an ad in the paper does get some response, and it is something that works. Just be aware that, again, it's one of those low response areas. <coughs> uh, ad on Craigslist. Now, Craigslist still is a good place to put ads for houses and open houses. So you should be using Craigslist. Craigslist costs money or is free? Free. It's free. It's still free, I should say. They started charging a couple of years ago if you were in certain ads for certain things, but almost everything is still free. So if you run an ad for an open house, you can still run an ad on Craigslist for free. And what's cool about that is you can put links in there to other websites. Uh, if you have a video on YouTube, you can put a link in there to a YouTube video. Uh, you got a Matterport or some of the some of the really cool types of uh, think tools that we have today to promote a house. You can put those links in there and make that ad very valuable. And then you can update it every couple of days, keep it fresh. So, ad on Craigslist definitely is a good extra thing to do. 
uh, add in the MLS. When you do an open house, do you know that you can put an ad in the MLS for your open house? Because not everybody knows that. So I'm just asking because you guys know that, that's good. For those of you listening that don't know that, uh, in the multiple listing service, you can put an ad in there for the open house. Now the listing agent has to do it. So if you're doing an open house, you have to get permission from the listing agent. Obviously you've got their permission because they're gonna let you do one, uh, I hope. <laughs> but call the listing agent and have them put an ad in the MLS for your open house. Uh, a sign in the yard. How many of you have put open house signs in the yard? Now you do, but how many of you have done it before the open house, like days before the open house? Have you ever thought about putting a sign in the yard going, coming this Sunday, coming this Saturday, open house, uh, noon to three or something like that, in the yard a few days before? What We did a, a study a few years back as to what made the phone in the office ring. And we went through all the internet stuff and and yard signs and agent contacts and newspaper ads and all the different magazines we used. It was, a, it was a local study. And guess what the number one thing was that made the phone ring? Word of mouth. No. Sign. no. Sign. A sign. sign in the, yard. <clears throat> the sign in the yard. And it was huge. It was over 80%. The sign in the yard made the phone ring. Because what we did, we ran this for like 90 days. Our secretary, every time a call came in, said out of curiosity we were doing a survey you know, where are you calling off of? This ad, this ad, sign, whatever. And over 80% of the time it was a sign. So how much, how much power could it be to add a sign a few days before the open house just simply saying open house this Saturday, noon to three? Get, the, get people talking about it. Doesn't cost you much either. Um, a flyer box. How many use flyer boxes? Anyway, that's something that very few people are using these days. Used to be widespread. And I think part of what our problem is with a lot of new agents coming in is a lot of us have lost touch with the old sales techniques that still work. Mm -hmm. And flyer boxes work. They didn't for a while because we're in a big foreclosure thing going on. We had lots of foreclosures. But we're, we've shifted into a completely different market now from where we were a few years ago. And flyer boxes, people take flyers out of flyer boxes. Yes. And I recommend that if you have an open house, remove the normal flyers you're using and put open house flyers in. Open house this Saturday, noon to three, with some information. Uh, now, how many have pulled up to a house that has a flyer box and the flyer box is empty? Happens all the time, right? Okay, here's a little trick for you so that doesn't happen. I put 10 flyers in the open house and I'll hand 30 of them to the homeowner and I'll say, listen, every time the box gets empty, put another 10 in. That way, if we get a big rainstorm or something, they don't all get ruined. And that way, the seller is keeping the box full for me. I'm not running over there trying to keep the box full. And I tell the seller, when you get down to your last 10 flyers, call me and I'll drop off some more. Isn't that a lot easier than trying to go around keeping your box full? Yeah. Yeah. So there's a little tip for you on flyer boxes. You should use them. Uh, e-blast. You can e-blast an open house. You can e-blast all kinds of announcements out to all the agents. There are ways to, how many agents do we have in our MLS? Six thousand. Yeah. Six thousand. Yep. Okay. So there are ways to e-blast all six thousand agents at once. And I'm going to tell you how. And that's another way to get the word out about your open house. And then coordinate with other agents is kind of neat. We've done a few where we've actually coordinated with other agents. For instance, if you see two other houses in the same neighborhood, especially if they're on the same block as yours, call those other agents. And say, hey, why don't we do all do an open house together? I'm thinking about doing an open house on mine. Uh, would you like to do an open house on yours? And see if you can get two or three or four open houses all going at the same time. And what might that do? Bring more people. It's going to bring more people. Exactly right. And you help everybody out. And you be the point person. You be the lead person on that. And uh, you might get a lot more people through doing that. What else can we think of? Anything else anybody can think of that they've tried? Okay. Well, is that a pretty good list, though? Yeah. Okay. How much does that cost? You know, taking out the newspaper, if you don't do the newspaper or the direct mail, is there anything on there that really costs a lot of money? Yeah. No, not at all. You can get a flyer box for around 20 bucks. You can get a sign writer for about 10. So for very little, and you can reuse them on future properties. So for very little investment, you're popping yourself up there. Okay, great.
Direct mail. If you do direct mail, you want to target 50 to 100 neighbors. Okay. You want to target 50 to 100 neighbors. Get it out five to seven days before the open house. So any, it, I know there's a lot of people that still use direct mail. So if you do it, it's got to be done five to seven days before the open house. It doesn't pay to send out a direct mail piece the day before the open house. You want to do advanced planning. Okay. Full color. You do not want to send out a black and white piece. You have to send out something that's going to catch their eye. So send out a full color piece. It has to be professional looking. It can't be something that's sloppy. You can't send a piece out that looks like your 12 year old kid did it. They're going to know. It has to be a professional looking piece. Now we just happen to have something in our MLS as part of our dues that we pay for that puts together beautiful professional flyers. Do you know what it is? Agent 3000. Exactly. It's called Agent 3000. You can use Agent 3000. It's free. We already pay for it as part of our MLS. And you can make beautiful full color flyers with that that look professional just for open houses. And it has to have a call to action. What's a call to action? Well, a call to action is an advertising lingo for something that's going to motivate people to get them to do something. Okay? So you want to say, um, special open house only this Saturday from 10 to 3. You know, you must come during that time to experience this fantastic house and then any other thing that you're going to put in there. So the time itself is a call to action. But all advertising pieces must have some kind of a call to action. So it's going to motivate them to try to contact you. All right, or try to attend. And obviously it's got to have your information on it. So I've seen pieces go out without the agents or company's information, like they're in a hurry. And I've seen beautiful pieces, and I'm going through it, and I can't find the agent's information. They just forgot. So make sure to put your company and your information on there. And the company must approve it. For any piece that you're going to use, we got to see it and we got to approve it. You can just email to us. Uh, for anybody watching or listening, your company has got to approve this. Once your broker approves it, then you're good to go with that piece. So that's direct mail. Email. If you're going to email about open houses, um, as I mentioned, you need emails in order to do that. Uh, if you've been, if you work in a particular area, it's like a farm area for you, and you've talked to some of the neighbors, you probably have some of their email addresses. And there are other types of methods to get email addresses, uh, so you can definitely use email on that. Um, but as I mentioned, I like, uh, and the ad in the newspaper for open houses does get some response. So, you know, you can check into that and see. I, I stopped advertising in newspapers years ago. I just be honest with you, I did, but I do see people still do it. So there is some success rate with that. Um, but Craigslist, which looks like that, I like using Craigslist. So me personally, I don't do either one of these. You can, but I will always post it on Craigslist. So just to talk about that for a second, uh, MLS Multiple Listing Service. Obviously, I just talked that we can get into the MLS and we can post it in the MLS date and time and the information about the open house. And then this is an example of what a sign writer might look like. I used to keep dozens of sign writers. Wendy will remember back when I was a full-time agent years ago. We had had probably six or eight different sign writers, uh, Sunday, both for Saturday or Sunday, and both with different times, so I could just rotate them between the different houses I was doing open houses on. And I just reused them over and over and over again. So, um, good question to ask right now, because this shows an open house from two to four. How long should you do an open house for? Tops three hours. Tops three hours. How long do you think? At least three hours. At least three, At hours. three hours. Okay, what's the maximum you do an open house for? Um, say one to five. Okay. So, what do you think? Oh, I, I think two to three hours. Okay, what do you think? Two to three. Yes. Two to three hours, yeah, okay. Uh, I personally would max out at three hours. And, and I prefer a relay team. I'll do the first hour and a half and let somebody else come do the other hour and a half. Because <laughs> I don't want to sit there for three hours. Yeah. Uh, but let me, let me ask you a question. I'm just going to, again, put it into perspective here. If you are going through the ads and you are going through Craigslist or the newspaper, whatever it is you're, you're thinking about looking at open houses, 
and you've got 10 or 12 open houses, you're a buyer and you're going to go through the open houses. And you see open houses 11 to 4, 11 to 3, you know, noon to 4. You see all these, that's pretty normal that you see. Mm -hmm. And then you see one that's open from noon to 1.30. Now, which one of those are you going to make sure you go to? Noon to 1.30. Noon to 1.30. Why? Because it's the shortest spell. Because it's the shortest, shortest spell. Yeah. Exactly right. So one trick to get people through your open house is have a shorter open house. And I present that idea to the owner and I'll say, listen, exactly like I just said to you, which one would you go to? He said, well, we go to that one. Exactly. That's why I do them for an hour and a half, max two hours. Uh, so rarely will I do a three hour open house unless I really am canvassing the neighborhood because I really want to pick up some extra leads. But uh, think about shorter open houses instead of longer open houses as a way to get more people through. So am I opening your mind just a tiny bit? Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Flyer boxes. They kind of look like that. Uh, I've seen them as cheap as 10 or $11. Usually they're around 20 Some come with a metal post. And uh, they last for a couple of years down here in the Florida heat. They do go to heck after a while. So you know, keep in mind that they're probably going to get replaced after a couple of years. But uh, you want some with a clear plastic front so people can see that there's a flyer in there. Some have a little business card holder where you can put flyers and business cards in there. <coughs> in Florida, and not just Florida, but be careful. If you do, you use one. Because I've had it happen to me a couple times where I go to put flyers and I lift open the top and bees, bees made a nest inside the flap. And I go, holy cow, there's bees in there. I've had that happen. I have heard a story of somebody finding a snake in one here yeah. in Florida once. Okay. Frogs too. Frogs? Yeah. Okay, frogs. Yeah, yeah, there frogs. you go. Okay. So just word to the wise, be careful in case you run into something like that. Right. But they do work. E-blast. I mentioned e-blast a second ago. Who has ever heard of FastEmailFlyers.com? Yeah, well, you may want to write that down. FastEmailFlyers.com. What this is, is it's a company that they have databases, and they pay a lot of money to keep their company updated, of a full database of all the different members of all the different multiple listing services across the United States. And you can put a flyer together, you can use their website to build a custom flyer, just pulling pictures right out of the MLS and, and uploading it that way, or you can upload your own personal custom flyer that you built on your computer, and then you get to pick the MLSs that you want to go to. So if you want, you can send it to Fort Myers, and then you can add Naples if you want, you can add Port Charlotte. I wouldn't add anything outside of the Fort Myers Cape Coral Lehigh, you know, if I'm doing an open house here. But it does give you the ability to advertise in multiple MLSs for a fee, this says as low as $14.95. What you can do is you can buy a number of flyers. I will tell you right now, I think, I think one is $29.95 if you do it one time. And if you buy two or three, then it drops to $25. If you buy, I believe, 10 or more, it drops all the way down to $14.95 a piece. And I have an account with them. I've got a few in there myself. So every time I send one out, I can send to all 6,000 people for $14.95. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that's a pretty good deal. I do know that most of them are not going to get read, but I do know that it, it has an average of 8 to 9 percent ratio of getting read because you, they give you the feedback. So if 8 percent of 6,000 realtors read my flyer, I think that's pretty good. You know, I reach like 450 realtors yeah. to actually read the thing. So check out fastemailflyers.com. Another one is propertyblasthomes.com propertyblasthomes.com and does exactly the same thing, a little different website, pricing is almost exactly the same, a uh, couple more bells and whistles, very easy, both sites very easy to use, uh, does take about 10 minutes for you to set up a flyer on either site because you have to add all your information and everything but they are very professional e-flyers and then I believe you can also print them out if you like the flyer enough I believe you can download and print them out as well. So check out email, fast email flyers and propertyblasthomes.com for sending out flyers. Coordinate with other agents. Do something called a neighborhood open house event. And we did this when me and Wendy were selling up north in Wisconsin several times. I've seen some realtors do it down here. I've seen all kinds of different ideas. Um, I've seen ideas where they get uh, a, a meal going, where I remember one we, we were really famously with because the guy's house was for sale 
was a chef. I mean, he actually certified chef. So he cooked all kinds of stuff. And what we had was we had um, like uh, uh, appetizers at the first house. And then we had the uh, main meal at the second house. And then we had some desserts at the third house. And then we had coffee at a fourth house. And I think we had something else at the fifth house. So you could actually go to like a five course meal by going to all five houses. So, and, and we had a great turnout. We had probably 50, 60 agents come through the whole thing and ran it for about uh, two hours. And it was, it was pretty, pretty fun. So coordinating with other companies can do stuff like that. So get together with three to five other agents who have listings in the same area as you. Three to five other agents. Make flyers and postcards with the addresses and the time. So pick somebody, delegate it out, or you do it yourself to have all of them on there at once and you're going to all agree on the same on the time and then have all the, all the addresses on there. Offer to distribute the flyers via door knocking or phone calls because you want the leads. Okay? Offer to do, hey, guess what? Tom and Sally and Mike, I'll distribute it for you. They don't want to do it anyways. So why don't you go get their leads? Okay? Now, if they want to, hey, great. I'm just telling you right now, it's a great way to expand your area and get more leads. Door knock, phone call neighbors three to five days prior to the event. No less than three, no more than five to get the word out properly. And that's going to get you the most number of ex most, most exposure and the most number of people. Get each agent to offer different foods and our appetizers and our desserts as an idea. Okay. Um, I've heard of wine and cheese events and we've had a couple of famous ones like that. Although I know most realtors have a wine and cheese open house, which goes like this. Where are all the people? I'm here by myself. Jeez, I hate open houses. Wine and cheese. So <laughs> Don't do that kind of a wine and cheese party. Have a prize entry. Uh, each attendee must get signed. Have a prize entry. Each attendee must get signed at each house. In other words, we always did this when we would do it. We'd have some kind of a prize. Could be a $25 gas card or Maybe you go to some of the local um, restaurants or, or businesses and say, listen, we're doing this big event here with these open houses. Tell them what you're doing. Um, we're looking for donations. We're going to give away a couple of prizes. You might be able to get businesses to give you some stuff to give away at your open house if you really want to make this thing big. So there's an idea. And then everybody has to sign in to have their name entered to draw a prize. So what we would have if we had five houses is they each have a sheet and the agent at each house had to sign the sheet as proof that they came through all five houses and that became the entry into the into the drawing. So it was a lot of, and we had a lot of fun. I uh, have several prizes with a grand prize. Try to get area businesses to donate the prize, as I just said. So you can have some small prizes and one big prize. And it, you, you, can you can you sort of get the idea how big you can take something like this? Yeah. 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 Work with sponsors like Title and Mortgage Companies to help split up the cost. Why not ask a title or mortgage company to come and work with you at your open house? They want to meet those people too, right? Yes. Absolutely. Isn't that business for, business for them as well as you? Yeah. So you're going to do all the work. Ask them if they'd be willing to you know, put something in on the cost. Hey, you know, we're going to have a sandwich tray. It's going to cost me about 100 bucks. You want to split it 50 bucks each or something like that? Um, and oftentimes, if you take your time to do this and set this up, you may put a very extravagant open house on that doesn't cost you a dime, which is pretty cool. Capture everyone's name, phone, phone number, and email address to be entered. So have something and some way to get all of their information because remember, you're trying to get leads here. So you want to have something to follow up with. Don't just let people walk in and walk out without giving you their information. Divide up the names equally between the participating agents. That's fair. If you, if you have a neighborhood open house and you get 40 or 50 people through all the houses and there's five of you doing it, everybody should get the equal number of leads. You just say, okay, because you don't know who's who. Okay, you each get nine leads. That's only a fair way to do it. Um, anything else you guys can think of that I didn't cover on this side? Anybody have some little sparks of ideas? Or you think I got a pretty good list here? All right, okay, we'll go with that.
Those of you listening and watching, if you have a good idea, I'd love you to text it or email it to me later. I'll add it in. Now, here's some people to partner with that can help you put this open house together. A title company, as I mentioned a minute ago. A mortgage banker or a mortgage broker. I've actually had Michael Harbath, our banker here, come to uh, one of our broker opens and, and hand their business cards, and he enjoyed doing it. Uh, a home inspector would be another possibility, right? You can get business from that. Uh, insurance company. De definitely an insurance company. Uh, home security company. Might be a good one. Uh, home warranty company. There's all kinds of home warranty companies out there. Might be a good one to ask to come set the open house, hand out their business cards. Uh, appliance company. Why not? We, we have relationships with a couple of salespeople at appliance companies. If I call them up and put a big event like this together and say, why don't you come and talk about your appliances? I'll bet you they'd love to come to something like that. Uh, furniture company, kind of the same thing, right? And here, this one's a really obvious one. The last one's really obvious. If somebody's going to buy or sell a house, they're probably going to need this last kind of company almost all the time. Anyone want to guess? Moving company. There you go. Moving company. Yeah. Moving company. Yeah. So who else can you think of? You know, if you wrote these down in your notes, Hopefully you get some, some fluids going and say, okay, there's really an endless supply of people that we can invite to come help us set up this open house. Now you might be thinking right now, Dave, this is way too much. I don't want to do all that work. I get that. I'm not saying you have to do this. The name of today's course is called The Perfect Open House. And like a buffet, you can pick and choose what it is that you want to do. And the more that you put on your plate, the more successful your open house is going to be. So like, like over in Lehigh, you could also get a water system company. Okay, a water system company, right? because especially it, all the well yeah, and septic properties. The, yes, because that's all that's over Very there good. in some of the back areas. You absolutely. Know, not everybody's on city water. Sure, Abs right. absolutely. I think yeah. that's a great idea. Yeah, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. With all the new construction, maybe you get a, a building company. Right. A builder to come in, hand out his brochures. That's mm -hmm. might not be a bad idea either. How about a boat club? A boat club? Part with them. If you are in an area that where boating is a big part, like a lot of Cape Coral is, um, that might be a real good idea. Sure. Especially if it's a canal front property. I think that might be a real good idea. So good. I'm, I'm getting you guys thinking. That's great. Let's talk about signs and flags for a second. Have several directional signs. Your, your basic arrow pointing where to go. You got to have, in my opinion, you should have three to four directional signs. Pointing. There's more than one way to get to the house. Have one off of this street and have one off of this street. I think that's really important. There is overkill. We had this guy back in Wausau, Wisconsin, where I was from, and all the neighbors hated him. And I ended up with his listing. But uh, for, he was like the Fizbo forever. He was for sale by for over a year. Wouldn't list with anybody. And uh, he would hold open houses. He had over 100 open house signs. And he would spend the morning putting open house signs all over the neighborhood. There'd be like every block an open house sign from every possible tributary going into his house. And his neighbors actually called the city and complained. There's got to be something to be done about this. And they all hated him for it. So there is something called overkill. Right? He just listed it with me and then we sold it. Yeah, that would have been easier. And I did get the listing eventually, so. Uh, have open house flags. Have you guys seen the open house flags that look like this? Yeah. Yeah. These are not expensive. I've got a couple here at the office. They come with a big metal stake. It's a nice flag. It stands about 10 feet tall, maybe 15 feet tall. Uh, very easy to assemble. Comes with a carry bag. And I think I paid like 49 bucks for the whole kit. And they're very well constructed. They'll last for years. Uh, so you know, just check out open house flags like that. Very nice looking tool to put in the yard. Yeah, I, I put at least one in the yard sometimes too, depending on you know if anybody else is using it. Have an open house yard sign. Okay. Obviously, when you're doing the open house, you want to have something out there that says open house. That's obvious that the open house is today. So you want to have an open house yard sign out there. Add balloons if you want for fun. 
if you want to have some balloons and have some fun, hey, I've seen people do that. Kind of looks like this. You know, have a little bit of fun like that. But I've also seen a, a realtor driving with a bunch of balloons and he got out of the car and all of a sudden they all went. <laughs> they, yeah. they lost them in the wind. And we do get some pretty big winds down here. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Before the open house starts, really important. So if you are taking notes, really important stuff here to write down. Consult with your seller and make sure the home is clean and ready. I got to an open house one time. The guy was sleeping on the couch. They missed a big party the night before. Pizza boxes everywhere. <laughs> the TV still going, stunk inside the house. I was like, oh my gosh. It was a five hour cleaning job. I just said we're canceling the open house and I put open house cancel out front. Um, so make sure that they're ready for you. Oh, and also tell them they have to leave. Tell them, listen, you gotta get out of the house. You can't be here. I had one guy, the football game was on, he didn't wanna get out of his chair. He wanted to sit there and drink his beer and watch the football game while I did the open house. Um, I was a young realtor, I didn't understand that was really, really bad. I mean, this is going back like almost 30 years ago. So I held the open house and it was just a total disaster. So if something like that happens, you're in charge of say, listen, Bob, you gotta get out of here. You just can't be here during the open house. This is professional. Arrive at least 30 minutes early. Okay. Now, I'm saying that because I've seen agents show up two, 10 minutes late and there's three people standing outside waiting to get in. Okay. 30 minutes early allows you to do some of these next things I'm gonna put on the list. Turn on all the lights and open the curtains and shades. You don't want that place feeling like a morgue. I've walked in houses where it's so dark in there, you feel like there should be a funeral. So make sure all the curtains are open, open all the shades, get that thing light and airy because that's gonna make the house feel inviting. And every single light, turn on, well not every single light, but turn on most of the lights in the house. I'll police the home for garbage, money, and hazards. Take a little walk around, see if there's some garbage that you need to throw away. We found money laying out. We were doing an open house on some guy had a thousand dollars sitting on his bedroom dresser, out wide open. So we, we hit it for them, but I mean, my goodness. Um, other hazards, um, good time to hide the drugs. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, just keep in mind, you're gonna look for that kind of stuff. Uh, close any open toilet seats. I hate that. Close open toilet seats. It's definitely an open toilet is a no-no. Place signs on the toilets that say, do not use. Take a sign that says, do not use it, put it right on the seat. If you've been in this business long enough, you've had an open house where somebody went in and shut the door and used the bathroom, and now the open house was ruined for the next hour. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? If it hasn't happened to you, it will. it will. All right. So to avoid that from happening, put signs on the seats that says, do not use. Newer model home. I learned this from a guy that built, model, he, did a, he did a tour of homes, model home every single year. And uh, the first year they did, somebody went in and used the bathroom and ruined the, ruined the model. Uh, so what he did was he removes the bathroom doors on his models during his open houses. Right. If there's no bathroom door, nobody's going to try to use it. He didn't have to worry about any signs or anything. He just took the bathroom door off. <laughs> it's effective, right? Yeah. Yeah. Adjust thermostat for comfort. Not too hot, not freezing. Get it down and then don't forget to put it back when you're done. You want it? Cool. Can't have a hot open house. Soft music playing in the background is a plus. It's not extremely important. Um, but put a little bit of soft music in the background, just enough to have a little low vibe going on. That's a really good thing to have. Set up and arrange food, materials, flyers, laptop, etc. Anything you have to set up and bring with you, it's going to take a while to set up. This is when you do it. So can you see how this might take 30 minutes to do all this? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, don't get there five minutes before. Get there early enough to be able to follow this list. This is all going to help you have a better open house. Additional things to have and do. I've got this particular flyer. 
that I will send you guys. This is a reminder to you that only 5% of open houses sell from open houses. But look at this. Real estate professionals, 51%. Friends and neighbors, 10%. Signs, 15%. I've just told you to go knock on doors and call neighbors. I told you to use signs, and you're a real estate professional. So if you do the things I'm telling you, how much of that pie grew to help you try to sell that open house? And pick up what? Leads. Leads, exactly right. Uh, this is a sample of an open house flyer that we used for years. And uh, it's very simple. It does not have a price on it. Uh, simply pictures of the house, like three or four pictures. The date and the time, your information, nothing else, uh, because the price is irrelevant. That's my house. Yes, I know. It's your house. It's a fake flyer. <laughs> Wendy's back there. Why are you selling our house? <laughs> I just put this together as a fake flyer. I use it when I'm teaching. <laughs> yeah, because he's not with Century 21 Birchwell. I know. That's really old. That's how old that is. That's like 11 years ago. <laughs> so, but you get the idea. Why have a price on the flyer? There's no reason to have a price on the flyer. You're having an open house. You're looking for leads. Putting a price on your flyer might scare leads away that you could otherwise have picked up and talked to. Mm -hmm. So I don't believe in paying a price on the flyer. Neighbor and open house. This is a sample of one that we used uh, when we had like a whole bunch of open houses at once and we canvassed the neighborhood with this one and handed this out to everybody at all the different doors and uh, helped really build. It was a very successful open house. We had four brand new houses. And uh, we actually sold one, and we picked up a whole bunch of leads. It was, it was a good one. This is a sample of what you might put in the yard. If you don't have a sign writer, maybe you just get an individual, individual post with a day and a time. And hey, you can use it over and over again. You know your schedule. Now you know what time you're going to be doing an open house, if you don't. But it has to have a professional look. Uh, have an open house welcome. Please walk right inside. Take a sign that says, open house, welcome, please come in, and paste it right to the front door. So that when they see it, they don't have to knock. They can just come right in. I want them to feel welcome as they're coming into the house. So, real easy. You'll all get a copy of this, too. By the way, everybody listening, everybody watching, if you send me an email, I'll make sure you all get a copy of everything that's in this course. Uh, I use this one depending on the weather. It says, please remove shoes before entering. Some sellers are very stickly, sticky about that. They want shoes off. And particularly if the weather's really bad out, uh, you don't want them slopping around in the house with their shoes on. <clears throat> so I will put this next to the open house. Please walk inside. <coughs> Excuse me. Please exit through the front door side. I want to control the open house. I don't want them coming in the front door and leaving out the back door with not talking to me, me not getting a chance to talk to them, or who knows, maybe they stole something. People do go to open houses looking for things to steal. And this happened several years ago. We were having, our company had like a, a 10 or 12 open house thing going on where we were having all over town and it was all at the same time, but it was all over town. And somebody was going in and stealing prescription drugs. And the first, they get, they, this person went through like three houses, and all of a sudden, one of the agents caught on what was happening. So they called all the other realtors and said, listen, this guy's driving a green Chevy uh, Malibu, and uh, he's stealing drugs. Keep an eye on him. And my friend Roz was at one, and the green Chevy Malibu pulled up, and Roz had just got the call to watch out for the guy. So Roz says, hey, come on in. And uh, <clears throat> while the guy's walking around, Roz locked all the doors, locked the guy inside the house, and called the cops. <laughs> and the guy didn't even realize it, and the cops showed up and arrested him. He had the prescription drugs in his car because they have people's names on them. Mm -hmm. Arrested him right there. So, true story. So I use these signs on all the other doors so that they can come and go through one door. Yeah. <clears throat> Open house comment form. This is something I invented 15 years ago, and I've probably gotten more feedback from agents across the country telling me what they really love. They love this more than anything. Um, you can do it yourself. You can use mine. I'll give you a copy of this one. And basically, instead of having people sign in, because the traditional way is people come and you have them sign in, right? Instead, I have a pile of clipboards, and I have a pile of pens, and I have a bunch of these. 
And as they come in, I hand them a clipboard of the pen and said, thank you very much for coming to the open house. We would love your feedback about the open house. If you don't mind, when you get done, please take a second and just check the boxes as to what you thought of the house. I, I, I put the house address for whatever house it is. They put their name, their phone number, their address, and their email. Um, I tell them, you know, I don't necessarily need their address, but I do want their email or their phone if possible. I would prefer everything because I want to do thank you notes later on. Mm -hmm. But it says, outside curb appeal, excellent, good, fair, and needs work. Inside condition, excellent, good, fair, and needs work. Location, area, excellent, good, fair, or not desirable. Price, excellent, very close, or needs lots of adjustment. Guess which box gets checked a lot? Needs, needs, lots, needs of lots of adjustment, adjustment. right. Overall value, excellent, good, fair, or below average? And then two great questions. I may be interested if I could buy it for blank, or I'm not interested but believe it will sell for blank. And then two more questions. Are you working with any other realtors at this time, yes or no? And do you own a home now, yes or no? These are great questions that you want. You're not gonna get everybody to fill this out, but you're gonna find that about 70 to 75% of the people coming through will fill it out. Now, you, let's say you get 20 of these, and 15 of them all say the house is overpriced. Do you now have some ammunition to go back to your seller with for a price reduction? Right. Exactly right. And it's not coming from you, it's coming from the people. Right. So it becomes very powerful. Uh, here is a great open house tip. <clears throat> Take a box of thank you cards and some stamps with you to the open house and handwrite one to each prospect as soon as they leave, then drop them in the mail on the way home. You all know you have to send thank you cards. We all know that. If we have an open house, we should send thank you cards. How many of us really do it? You have the open house. You go home and think, I'm going to write thank you cards. Then you get busy. Two or three days go by. I should really get them thank you cards done. Five, six days go by. I should really get them thank you cards done. Guilt is growing on your shoulder. And what happens is you never actually do it. Okay? Why not take a box of cards with you to the open house? There's always time when you're sitting there all by yourself with nothing, waiting for the next client. So when you get that moment of silence, go through the sheets and write out a quick thank you for, open, for coming through the open house. And if you have 20 people and there's enough time in between, you can probably get all 20 cards done, put stamps on them, and now all you have to do is mail them on your way home. Really good use of time. Now, just for fun, a little something we've done is scratch off lottery tickets. Um, tell everybody you, you invite that they will receive a scratch off lottery ticket just for coming. I've done that for years just for fun. Uh, I do it when I'm going around door knocking. And I'll pick up 20 or 25 scratch off lottery tickets. Every once in a while somebody wins some and it's kind of fun. <clears throat> so it's just one more thing that I do to throw in to make it a good time. After the open house ends, when you're all done, here's what you need to know. Pack up everything and take out the garbage. Don't leave the garbage in the house. Uh, wash any dishes that were used. Don't let the seller come home to dirty dishes. Check all doors and windows and make sure they are locked. Turn off all lights and music, because you've turned it on. Leave a thank you note for the seller. Very important, just a little, hey, thank you very much for letting us hold an open house. I'll be in touch with you soon about the results. Pack up all signs and collect directional signs. I've seen people forget signs, so make sure you do all your signs. Mail thank you notes for your attendees on the way home, as I just mentioned. Scan the open house comment forms to your computer and then email them to your sellers. That's what you do with those forms. Scan them to yourself and email them to your sellers so they can see what everybody thought. And the last part, my favorite, wait for the seller to call you for a price reduction. You won't have to call the seller. You send them these forms. Your phone's gonna ring. Hey Dave, yeah, listen, I looked at all the comment forms. I think we should lower the price. Do you, Bob? You know, maybe you're right. <laughs> And next thing you know, you drop dropping the price and you didn't have to ask for it, they called you. It works like magic. It's almost 100% of the time that works. And finally, follow up. You have these names and numbers now. Don't let them just sit there being forgotten. You've worked hard for these leads. You've picked up some leads from door knocking or from calling around the neighborhood. Make sure you follow up with all of your new leads. Don't drop the ball. You've worked very hard to get them, and good things are going to come. 
So if I have a final note is have fun. I got this suggestion, have fun. Um, I found this little ad this guy ran for an open house he was doing. And uh, uh, this guy, obviously, I think he's having a good time. I'll let you be the judge. Looking for something fun to do? We've got the perfect solution. A Forbes Property Group open house. This Sunday from 12 to 2, Realtor Mike Bridges will be your host for this extravaganza. This five-bedroom, three-bath pool home is packed with features and sure to please. We've searched high and low for the best and refreshments. A glass of wine and some cheese would be refreshing on a Sunday afternoon. Would it not? And stay for the amazing entertainment. Open Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style. Op, 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 op. Open Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style. Op, 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 op. Open Gangnam Style. Be sure to tell your friends you won't want to miss it. Sunday, 12 to 2. Florida here, uh, not far from a couple hours north of here. So, <laughs> so hey, don't be afraid to have some fun. So any questions on what we've covered today? Okay, great. Let me ask you, how many here have picked up something today that could improve your life, your business, and maybe even help generate a sale and make more money? All right, fantastic. Well, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to come into Real Estate Agents Edge 60 Minute Money Makers, How to Hold the Perfect Open House. My name is Dave Detman and uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I look forward to seeing you at future 60 Minute Moneymakers. Take care and have a blessed day. Thank you.